seemed a possibility, um, but I don't think it's a possibility. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today, and hello to our viewing audience, and thank you for tuning in. Today is an exciting day for the Saints franchise history, for our loyal and passionate fan base, and our season ticket holders, and our business partners. We wish to welcome not only those of you in attendance today here at the Ochsner Sports Performance Center, but also those watching us on the streaming of NewOrleansSaints.com and locally on some of our finest TV channels. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to take you through the order of procession with our speakers. We'll have Saints owner Mrs. Gail Benson, Executive Vice President of Football Operations Mickey Loomis, and Coach Dennis Allen. I would like to take a moment now to welcome Coach Allen's family, his wife Allison, daughter Layla, and son Garrison. Welcome. We're excited for you to join us here today. Mrs. Benson will begin with brief remarks, followed by Executive Vice President Mickey Loomis, and then, as I said, Coach Allen. Once Coach Allen concludes his opening remarks, we will open the floor to questions. I would now like to welcome to the podium Mrs. Gail Benson. Thank you, Mark, and thank all of you for being here today. It's so nice to see everyone in person again with some not mass, so <laughs> it's good to be here. I would like to thank, first of all, Mickey Loomis, Dennis Larcher, Jeff Ireland, Kyle Harley, and Michael Parrington, and everyone who participated in this process for their thorough, determined hard work and diligence in this search. When Sean announced he was stepping down two weeks ago, our group quickly went into action, outlining a plan and identified an exceptionally qualified group of coaches to interview. I would like to thank each of these candidates for investing so much of their time and consideration as they shared their vision for our team. Making a decision on a head coach is not easy. As Mickey said from the beginning, our process to select our next head coach would be thorough, deliberate, and fair. This comprehensive and focused process has brought us to the decision that we made and that we feel is the best decision for our organization and our millions of loyal Saints fans at this time. That brings me to announce our naming of Dennis Allen, our new head coach, We have watched Dennis grow within our organization, successfully coaching on every level of our defense and displaying tremendous leadership throughout his time with us. He joined our staff in 2006 right after Katrina when many others, as Mickey has noted, were going elsewhere. Dennis came to New Orleans. Dennis has a deep knowledge of our culture here in the building because he has been part of creating that culture. He also understands the role our team plays in the community and how unique the relationship is between the team and our fans. Dennis's success as a defensive coach coordinator and even as acting head coach have proven he has the knowledge, discipline, passion, and ability to be a head coach in the NFL. We believe his time as head coach of the Oakland Raiders was an invaluable experience that has made him even more prepared to assume that role for our team. Dennis, you are very deserving and you have earned this opportunity. You are a great leader, teacher, and coach, and you are the right person to bring this team into the future. I'm so proud of you. I am thrilled to share this moment with you and your family who are welcome today and look forward to being with you for many years to come. 
In closing, I want to acknowledge the most important part of Dennis's life, his family. Not only have we watched Dennis grow professionally, but we have also watched his beautiful wife, Allison, grow from a young mom, always tending to Layla and Garrison, to now as a veteran NFL coach's wife. We welcome you all here today as part of our Saints family. The sacrifices you and your family have made to get to this day are significant. And I would like to thank you and your family for all you do to inspire and support Dennis and our team. You all have been part of our Saints family since 2006, and we are so happy you will continue to be such a vital part of that family for many years to come. Congratulations again, Dennis, on this well-earned position. Thank you all, and now I would like to introduce Mickey Loomis. Um, well, it's been a minute since I had to do this last time. Um, I was thinking today that there have been more U.S. presidents and more popes than we've had coaches <laughs> over the last uh, number of years over my tenure. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Mrs. Benson for trusting us to identify the next head coach of the New Orleans Saints. Thank you, Mrs. B. Uh, I want to thank um, Michael Parenton, Kai Harley, Jeff Ireland, and Dennis Lauscia um, for participating, first of all, for determining, helping deter determine the process that we used to identify the candidates that we uh, interviewed, for participating in the interviews, and for um, ultimately making the final decision. I can't tell you how it, comforting it is to have four really smart football people helping make a decision of this magnitude. Um, it's a president and three future GMs, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I also want to thank the candidates. Doug Peterson, uh, Brian Flores, uh, Aaron Glenn, Darren Rizzi, and Eric Bieniemy. These guys were all magnificent candidates, magnificent coaches, and we would, like any team, be lucky to have any one of them as a head coach. Um, I really appreciate their time and effort. Um, Look, we, we selected Dennis Allen. And we selected him because of his leadership skills, because of his teaching skills, because of his football acumen, and frankly, he's just a damn good football coach. Um, we interviewed him for six hours last week, but the truth is, we've been interviewing him for 12 of the last 16 years. We hated it when he left in 2011. And we couldn't have been more excited than when he returned to us in 2015. He's been instrumental in all of the success that we've had over the last 16 years. We are grateful for Allison, and we're grateful for Garrison and Layla, who are true New Orleanians in the family because They've spent most of their life here. Um, I couldn't be more honored, more excited than to introduce um, the next head coach of the New Orleans Saints, Dennis Allen. Wow, that's some tough stuff to follow right there. Um, uh, listen, I, this, is, this is just a tremendous day for, for me and, and my family. Uh, we're, we're obviously uh, totally ecstatic about having the opportunity to be the next head coach of the New Orleans Saints. Um, I want to thank Mrs. Benson, Mickey, Dennis Lausha, the search committee, Kai, Jeff, Michael. Um, I appreciate the, the thoroughness of the search. And, and yeah, was, I think it was a little over six hours, to be honest with you, Mickey. But... Um, but uh, Man, I appreciate and understand the decision that you had to come to. And I know the magnitude of that decision. I know how important it is to this organization and really to this city. Uh, and, and I don't take that responsibility lightly, and I appreciate the fact that you chose me uh, to lead this organization. Um, being a football coach takes a lot of time away from your family. 
Um, there's a lot of ups and downs that go along with being a football coach. I wish it was all uh, roses, but it's not always that way. And so there's a lot of things that um, you know your family has to deal with. Uh, and for me to be standing here today, I wouldn't have been able to do it without my family. Um, so I appreciate uh, my wife Allison, uh, my son Garrison, my daughter Layla. Uh, thank you so much for always being there uh, and encouraging me, and uh, and and really just you know going through this roller coaster ride of what it means to be an NFL football coach. Um, I've had an opportunity to work with a lot of great head coaches uh, throughout my career. Every single one of them has had uh, a huge impact on me, uh, me as a person, me as a man, uh, and me as a football coach. And I want to thank all of those guys for um, being there for me and, 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 and teaching me, me what it really is to, to, be, a, to be a coach. Um, I want to say a special thank you to uh, a man that I got an opportunity to be with for 12 of the last 16 years, as Mickey just said, a guy that I got a chance to really um, see up close what it is really to be um, really what I consider a Hall of Fame football coach, uh, and that's Sean Payton. Uh, Sean brought me here with his first staff in, in, in 2006. I was a little lowly assistant uh, in Atlanta. Kind of went, kind of kicking and screaming a little bit, but I, but I came, um, and it was the greatest thing from a from a professional standpoint. It was the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, um, and I've learned so many lessons here, um, being a part of his staff, and and really getting a chance to watch him up close and personal. Uh, I want to say thank you to um, all the assistant coaches that I've had a chance to work with over my career. Um, without their tireless work ethic and dedication, um, I wouldn't be able to be here. Uh, this isn't something that you accomplish on your own. Um, and then finally, and probably most importantly, um, I want to thank the players. Um, a coach is only as good as the players that he puts out on the field. And behind every great coach is a lot of really, really good players. And again, I've been fortunate uh, to be around a lot of really good players uh, that, you know, really have committed to the game of football um, and helped me along the way. And, 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 and really, I'm, I'm standing here really kind of on their shoulders right now. Uh, and I want to just really say a special thanks to uh, the players that I've had an opportunity to work with over the last seven years here in New Orleans. Um, the city of New Orleans is one of the more passionate and energetic cities in all of the world. I love this fan base. Um, I want our team to mirror this fan base. I want our team to have the same passion and energy that, I, that this fan base has. Um, I can tell you this, our team is gonna be tough, our team is gonna be smart, and our team is gonna be highly competitive. And we're gonna play with a passion and an energy that our opponents are either un unwilling or unable to match. And that's what the New Orleans Saints are gonna be about. Um, again, I'm excited about this opportunity. Um, I understand that there's a lot of work to be done. I know that we have a great foundation in place and I'm thankful for that. And I'm looking forward to building on the winning tradition uh, of the New Orleans Saints. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Dennis, how much did you wonder if you'd ever get a second chance at being a head coach? Um, you know, I, look, I can't say that those, those thoughts didn't ever come uh, enter into my mind, um, but I've never really been about what's the next opportunity. I've really been about being in the here and now and trying to do the best job that I can at what I'm doing at that moment in time. Uh, and so I was really concerned with trying to be the best defensive coordinator that I could be for the national, for the New Orleans Saints, and uh, and when you do those things, um, then good things happen. And so, um, I, I I was excited um, to get this opportunity to, to to interview for the job, and and uh, you know went for it. Yeah, and you guys feel like you learned from the previous experience. Uh, well, look, 
there's a lot of things that you learn. I mean, I, I would say this about the previous experiences that it was a totally different set of circumstances. Um, you know, I was a 39 year old head coach at that point in time. Um, and, and, and I think, um, you know, it was just, there was j different circumstances uh, with, that, with that experience. I know this, I know that um, I'm excited about this organization. I love this organization. I've been a part of it for 12 of the last 16 years. I was telling Mrs. Benson today that this is, you know, I've been able to be in a few places and this is as quality of, a, of an organization as there is in the National Football League. And so um, uh, I'm just really excited about, you know, being here today. Dennis, you know this building well. Have, what kind of decisions have you made so far about a staff? Yeah, I, I don't know that we've come to any, any uh, concrete decisions about, about everything. I do think that we have uh, a lot of great pieces in place. Um, I think that's one of the unique things about uh, this job. Uh, I believe Mickey may have said this before, but this was not a broken job. Um, this, is, this, is a, this is a job that is a desirable job. This is a job that has um, a foundation and a culture uh, of winning that's already been built. And so my job as I see it is, man, I want to try to build on that. Um, I want to try to tr try to continue this winning tradition. Um, and, and I don't see this as something where, the, where we need to have a ton of change. Yes. When, you follow, when you follow someone like Sean, how do you sort of balance continuing the tradition but putting your own stamp on it? Well, look, I think, I think you learn from the experience of watching Sean. But at the end of the day, one thing I do know, okay, is that when you get put in a position like this, you have to do it your way and you have to be yourself. And so, um, look, I'm gonna come to work every day and I'm gonna be me and I'm gonna put my own little spin on it. Um, but yet, man, there's a lot of things that we've done really, really well here. And I wanna be able to continue those things and I just wanna be able to put my little spin on it. Is it what is your vision? How big is it, do you think it is to to, as you said, follow a Hall of Fame coach. And how much responsibility personally do you feel knowing your legacy with the team here to keep that going? Well, look, I think that's, I think that's a huge responsibility. Um, but I think it's, I think I'm looking more at it as, um, I wanna take the lessons that I've learned. I wanna build upon those lessons, okay? And I wanna, I wanna create my own legacy here with the New Orleans Saints. Um, and, and, and so I know this is a job that you have to do um, with your own personality. And that's the way I plan on attacking it. And is, what is your vision as far as uh, defensive play calling? You know, Sean Payton was the head coach, but he's off, offensive coordinator, I mean, kind of calling plays. What is your vision and your role? Is it yeah, I, really setting up the game plan? Or what? Yeah, I think... I think um, that's stuff that we're going to determine over the next few days. Um, but yet, um, I was telling somebody before, it's hard to turn your baby over. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, so, and so I see myself, you know, still, you know, being heavily involved there and, and, and uh, uh, heavily involved with the game plan and, and, and even potentially the play calling. How much does it mean to you to get this opportunity here? Um, just considering this is kind of where, where you... Yeah, really no, I, I look, I, to me, this is the perfect fit. Um, it's the perfect fit because I know the people here. Um, I know the administration here. I know the players here. I know the support staff here. I know the coaches here. Um, I understand all the culture um, that's here in this building. And so there's a, there's a comfortableness uh, to making this to making this move and, and uh, man, I just think if I if I could have laid at home at night and dreamt about where would be the one place that I would want to be the head coach, it'd be the head coach of the New Orleans Saints. Dennis, you mentioned being 39 when you got the Oakland job. Ten years later, how would you say you're better prepared for this maybe now than you were 10 years ago? Yeah, way more experience, way more experience. Seen a lot of different things. Had a, lot of, had a lot of opportunity to lead a lot of men. You know, when I went to, when I went to Oakland, I was a one-year coordinator uh, and got an opportunity to go be a head coach. And so now I've been back here, you know, basically in a coordinator's role here in New Orleans for six and a half years and, and, and getting a chance to watch, you know, how Sean operates. And so 
I just, I've just seen a lot more. I've just been through a lot more, experienced a lot more. Um, been through a lot of winning since that time. Um, and so, um, so yeah, I just think it's, it, it just comes with the territory. You know, the, the more you do something, the better you get at it. Dennis, obviously known for defense, but there's certainly a question mark going into the season at quarterback. What's kind of your philosophy with that position uh, stylistically? I mean, how much do you want – I mean, do you have a plan for that to what, how you want to see maybe an offense run? Well, look, I, I, I would say this. I would say that I don't see the offense being run too, sim, too dissimilarly to what we've been able to, to do in the past. I think, you know, there's maybe a few things that we can tweak and do, do a few things a little bit differently. But, um, look, I want the offense to – I want to be a physical offense. I want to be able to run the football. I want to be able to create explosive plays. I want to be a smart offense that, that doesn't have a lot of negative plays. I want to protect the football. And I want to be good situationally. And, and there's a lot of different ways that you can go about to go about doing that. So um, we're, 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 going to be, we're going to be a good offense. We're going to be able to put some points on the board. We're going to be explosive. We're going to be exciting. Dennis, do you think initially you would be involved with the personnel as much as Sean Payton was? Yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's I think that's one of the major roles of the head coach is to be heavily involved in in the personnel. Um, offensively, defensively and special teams. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. Yes. No, no matter what you do, you're going to be compared to the guy who was in front of you. And that's going to go on, especially in the first year, all year long. Have you made peace with that or do you care or? Yeah, I think I think I'm at peace with that. Look, I understand what the expectations are here, um, but those are the expectations in our league, and and uh, I look at it as what a great example to follow. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. Dennis, you said you haven't made all your coaching staff decisions, but what what are you thinking are going over in the next few days? Well, I, look. I don't, I don't really want to get into any specifics on that right now. I think that's something. Look, I just was informed yesterday that I was, that I was going to get the job. So, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I think we may be 24 hours into this thing. So I think there's a lot of decisions that, that, that need to be made. And uh, I just would say, look, we got, we got a talented staff. And, and uh, you know, I like a lot of the things that we've, we've done. And is there anything you learned about that aspect of the job in particular in Oakland? Because I know – in your first couple of years, you went through three or four different quarterback ideas. Was that something that kind of stalled things for you? Yeah, look, I mean, um, obviously I keep saying this. You know, there's a lot of different circumstances that went through uh, that, first, that first opportunity for me, and I learned a lot from it. And so um, I think, I think uh, being put in a position like this where there's the ability to keep some continuity uh, within what you're doing on the team and within the organization, I think is important. Dennis, what have the last two weeks been like just from Sean retiring to now? Has it been as much of a whirlwind as it feels like? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has. You know what I mean? Like you, you wake up in the morning, you're thinking about it. You go to bed, you're thinking about it. And so, um, you know, and, and, and you got, you know, family at home and they're, they're thinking about the same thing. and. And you got a bunch of people within the organization, and they're they're thinking a lot of the same things. It, yeah, it's stressful. It really is. Um, but uh, but that's part of that's part of the business. That's part of what we deal with. Dennis, did you grow up in Texas dreaming of being a coach like this at this level? Uh, I'll say this: I wanted to be a coach from the time I was in seventh grade. I think coaches have had a tremendous influence on my life. Uh, from you know my dad coaching all my little league teams to junior high coaches, high school. And, and really, quite honestly, Jeff, it, you know, when I was in high school, I wanted to be a high school coach when I grew up. And I had a chance to go play college ball. I wanted to be a college coach and didn't really have any amb ambition to be in the NFL. And, you know, R.C. Slocum told me one day, he said, you get your tail to the National Football League as fast as you can. And I did exactly what he told me to do. Um, and, and really, look, I just wanted to. I just wanted to coach football, work really hard, and do my job. And and uh, I think when you do those things, good things happen. Dennis, your defense 
the been real high energy celebrate not plays and that like how much does that attitude you think help build and fuel success and is that something you want to kind of spread throughout when you talk about like the attitude of the city and all of that well i think this i think i think i think your team's going to feed off of your personality um and and that's my personality that's the way i go about doing my job uh, that's the way i've coached the defense here and i don't see that being you know any differently and i just think our team um look i think you saw it in the in the tampa bay game i think i think you saw a passion and an energy and um in the way that uh, uh that, that our team's going to play i know you're talking about being focused on being a defensive coordinator but as you're kind of going through these years do you pick up and annotate things to say like all right i have to get this opportunity to tell one of these things and yeah that. certainly certainly yeah you do um it, it gets back to that, you know, experience factor. And there's things that, you know, each year you're kind of just making, whether it's physical notes or mental notes about things that, you know, maybe you would, you know, continue to do or maybe some things that you might do differently. How close do you feel like this roster is to continue to be like the playoffs? Well, I, I, think it's, I think it's really close. When you really look at what we were able to do this season, you know, finishing the season out 9-8 and, eight and, and and just missing the playoffs and, you uh, Dealing with a lot of the injuries and things that we that we dealt with, um, I think this team's really close, um, and and we've won more games in the National Football League in the regular season than uh, what is it thirty other thirty other teams, you know. So, um, you know, five consecutive winning seasons, um, four consecutive, you know, four four years in the playoffs. Um, I think we're close. And this, when you interviewed for this job, how did you? Uh, what did you want to convey to the team? Like, what, what was uh, kind of the one thing you wanted to make sure that they understood about you? To convey to Mickey, Kai, everybody's interviewing you for this job. Like, I, I, look, I think my biggest message to to them really was, as Mickey said, you know, um, that I felt like I was the best guy for the job. I felt like that my knowledge of this organization, my knowledge of this team. Uh, and just the fact that, you know, I think I closed out saying to them that, you know, I don't know how you thought I did in this six and a half hour interview, you know, but I've been interviewing for 12 of the last 16 years. And, and I felt like uh, that my body of work here in New Orleans uh, more than qualified me to do this job. Dan, are you going to take the humble approach now, an interim head coach with all of a sudden shut out Tampa Bay and Tom Brady and then shoutouts in 2006. And you didn't want to take any credit. Is that just your role? Or will you show maybe? That's me. Uh, and you won't be as humble maybe? That's me. Coach? Okay. That's me. I like this quote when you said, this is the ultimate team game. It's played by individuals, but games are won as a team. Yeah. So is that it's about the team. And no individual is, is bigger than the team. Um, no coach is bigger than the team. Um, everything's about the team. And, and, and I think, Bobby, I think the best leaders have a humble heart. And like I said before, like, I'm going to be me. That's the only thing I know how to be is be me. Um, you know, when you watch me coach out there, it's, it's firm, it's demanding, it's energetic, all right? But at the end of the day, my job is to put guys out there in positions to have success, the players are the one that go out there and, and, and win games. They're the ones that they're the ones that that, that do it. Um, you know, I, my my job is to my job is to to help them, and and that's the way I look at it. Why do you think RC saw you as an NFL coach instead of college? Maybe when he told you to go to the NFL. I just think he felt like the NFL was was the elite of the elite. And I think he felt like that was a place that I deserved to be. Can you talk about your defensive kind of influencers, philosophically, RC, defense wrecking crew, and Tuberville's in D.C., yeah. Bill Bennett? Yeah, so look, like I've been, I've been in some, some defensive environments. Uh, look, my dad played, I know nobody wants to hear this, but he played five years for the Falcons. Um, uh, and so, like, I grew up in a, in a football family. I grew up in a defensive-minded football family. Um, and then, yeah, look, look, Coach Slocum was a, was a big influence uh, in my life. 
Um, uh, I got a chance to, to be with uh, Wade Phillips and spent some time with Wade Phillips. Um, you know, Greg Williams was an influence in, in, in terms of how I go about, you know, coaching defense uh, and some of those philosophies. So I've been fortunate to be around some, some really good uh, defensive coaches. What, what are some, I know you adapt your defense around the personnel that you have, but what are some staples that you consider, you know, this is part of your defensive philosophy? Oh, well, some of them I can't say in this room. Um, but yeah, it, look, it's not about what you play, it's about how you play. And this game is a tough, physical game. And that's the way you have to play it. And so um, that's kind of been the motto. That's kind of been the way that we've gone about playing uh, defensive football. And that's really, like you ask our players, I tell them all the time, it, it's, not about, it's not about what you play, it's about how you play. Um, and and that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a culture that's developed over over a period of time of, of uh, continually, continually doing the same thing over and over. And then a lot of the teams here that have had success have had the big defensive line, uh, you know, a lot of four-man fronts, but a lot of big linemen, big linebackers. Is that because you've worked with the personnel and that's been an organizational philosophy or that, that's how you like to approach it? Too? Yeah, uh, look, this is a big man's game. Um, and and uh, I think we've done I think we've done a really good job, uh, specifically over the last five years, of clear. I think we always did that offensively with 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 Sean, uh, of clearly identifying the vision for a player, uh, and how that player is going to fit into what we're doing. Um, I think we've 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 uh, we've really done a much better job the last five years of really clearly identifying uh, what we've been looking for uh, in terms of a player. Um, I think, you know, Jeff, Michael, those guys do a great job in terms of personnel. Um, but it's really about creating the vision for what we're looking for um, and then uh, uh, really sticking to the prototypes as much as we can. When we're showing through the um, whole interview process, what was the biggest, maybe the most difficult question the organization had for you as a candidate? Ooh, there was a lot of them. <laughs> um, yeah, I think. You know, I don't know that there was just a specific question. Um, you know, I just think sometimes the the, um, uh, the 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 more abstract the question, the harder it is sometimes to answer, and the more concrete it is, the little bit easier it is to to answer. And so I think I think the tougher questions usually are just kind of you know some philosophical type stuff. And, and uh, um, but but I. I there were so many questions, I can't remember what they all were. Well, six and a half hours is a long time. That's a long time. That's did a long time. Talk, did your dad talk about being undefeated against the Saints as a player? Uh, no, I didn't even realize that. I, I didn't know that. Um, and Dennis, can you talk to the moment when you first found out you got the job and also when you first relate that to your, to your family, to your wife? Yeah, I first found out when Mrs. Benson came into my office to let me know that I was going to be the next head coach, um, and it was it was great. You know, I mean, we 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 she uh, she congratulated me, and then we spent probably 15, 20 minutes just just sitting talking, you know, and uh, uh, that's that's the nature of this organization. You know, this organization is really all about the people, and and uh, um, it was just. It, it was it, it was a, it was a nice it was a nice moment for us to just sit and talk and uh, get a chance to visit about it. Um, gosh, and then it kind of went to a whirlwind. I was down with Mickey for a minute, and then I went to go see Doug, and next thing I know, I got 93 text messages. You know, so um, uh, and then somewhere in there, I called Allison and told her that you know you can quit stressing now. We got the job. <laughs> Dennis, how important it is to have a quarterback of the defense like, a, you know, when you were coaching the DBs, Jonathan Vilma and now DeMario Davis, and that trust factor that being on the same wavelength going forward? Well, yeah, I think it's big. You know, I think it's big. And obviously those are things that don't just happen overnight. That, that kind of comes uh, over the course of time a little bit. And, and you know, when DeMario first came here, he, he was not that quarterback of the defense. He was the, he was the will linebacker and, and more the run and hit guy. And 
Um, you know, as things have evolved, we, we kind of moved him inside to the mic. He's kind of become that quarterback of the defense. He loves that role, uh, and I love him in that role. Between the interview and the hiring, was there an anxiety for you, or did you just kind of feel like? Oh, no, it was not, never any anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course there was. You know what I mean? Um, uh, you know, I felt like I was the best candidate for the job, but I knew there was a lot of other highly qualified people that, uh, that were interviewing for the job. And, and so, um, you know, I knew that this was, for lack of a better term, I knew that this was a, this was a competition. Um, and so, um, so yeah, there was, there was always just a little bit of, I don't know if anxiety is the right word, angst, whatever, the, whatever that word might be. Thanks. Do you see any changes or tweaks with like the personnel philosophies or the scouting process or, or a lot of your views on prototypes and all that, like an alignment with what's No, right? I think, look, it, it's been working. You know what I mean? And so what's not broke, you know, let's don't try to fix it. And so um, I, I, I see there, there may be um, some things, uh, oh, um, you know, with how we go about doing things, but I don't think from a fundamental uh, philosophy standpoint, I, I don't really see that changing. And as you, uh, to follow up on Luke, when he was asking if you notice some things and take some notes about being a better head coach. Did you do that deliberately over the last five, six years? I know Sean talked a lot about doing that in his time with Parcells. Did you take the last five, six years? And, and I know you're focused on your well, job. But. Yeah, I would say I would say that I was much more perceptive to things that were going on around me than maybe I was before. Um, and that's because I sat in that seat before. Um, and so uh, I wouldn't say that, you know, I just sat down and took a lot of pen to paper all the time, but, but there was a lot of mental notes that took place. Hey, Dennis, in the back. Oh, sorry to ask about Alvin on, on this day of all days, but obviously not ideal right before you get hired to have a player that's significant in this kind of situation. Just wondered if you wanted to express any thoughts about, about him or, or this situation or how you're going to start to deal with it. Um, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a situation where we're we're, we're gathering some some information, and uh, I think it's really early for for any sort of comment. I think I think we got to gather all the information before we um, have any sort of comment on that. Is that. How important is the quarterback position, and what you all do at that spot this offseason? Well, I think it's the most important decision that you make. You know. Um, and so that's going to be one of the first things that, that we do is, is, is we get together as a, as a staff, as an organization, um, and, and evaluate that position. Um, and then we'll make the best decision for, for this organization that we think is, is the right thing for us moving forward. Do you have a style for that? Or, I mean, because obviously the quarterback position has changed in the well, last look, few years. Well, there, look, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do it, all right? Um, uh, but we want we want a winner. You know what I mean? Just a winner, um, a guy that's got tireless work ethic, uh, a guy that can help lead men. You know that's that's what I see in the in the quarterback position. And so, um, but but look, that's that's certainly something that we've we've got to uh, we've got to figure out. Obviously, you've learned a lot since 2014, grown a lot. But what's, what's the biggest thing that you've learned about yourself, or your coaching philosophy, or one of the biggest sticking points you've taken with you since? Be then? you. Be you. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Don't try to be somebody that you're not. Um, and, and, and do this thing uh, the way that you think uh, is the right way to do it. And, and, uh, and that's the only way, really, that I know that you can have success. Um, and so... That's probably the biggest thing. Well, Dennis, with that being said, is that being you, is that yourself dancing in the locker room? Not. The my family can attest I'm not the greatest dancer. <laughs> okay, I'm a little bit more the wallflower than I am the dancer. There's some videos, though. There's some videos of you dancing on Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back to the, the BU. When did you feel in your career that you could be yourself? Um, well, look, I don't know that I can point to one specific moment that I was like, oh, I can be me. Um, I think that's just 
as you, it, Sean used to say this all the time, uh, confidence in bo is born out of demonstrated ability. So I think as I began to realize, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at this, you know, then it, it became much, much more easy to just, you know, relax and, and, and be me and, and do it the way that I knew how to do it. Not to keep harping on your previous stint, but was, is this one of the lessons you learned from that? Yeah. Was, was that something you wrestled yeah. with? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it was. Um, and so, um, so yeah, I think, that's, I think that's probably the biggest lesson I've learned in my whole coaching experience. We have time. Two more questions. Yeah, now that you've landed the job, what's, what's the next priority for you here? Um, well, there's a lot. You know, there's a lot. Um, you know, certainly uh, we've got to, uh, you know, make sure we've got the staff together. Um, we've got free agency coming up. We've got uh, the college draft. Um, and so that's where, like, we hit the ground pretty much running. There's a lot of things that have to happen, you know, over the next, uh, you know, call it two weeks to, to, uh, uh, to a month to, to kind of get ourselves going and, and uh Look, we're going to be be a lot of early mornings, a lot of late nights. Yeah, how much do you think this means to the fans, the city, a lot of people who've been for you to get this job? Um, well, I guess I can't really speak for the city. I, I know that I'm excited about it, um, and I'm excited about leading this team, and I'm excited about representing our city. Um, and I know this. I feel the passion and energy from the from from our fans. Uh, in the dome, on the streets, in the restaurants. Um, and so certainly I hope they're excited about it because I know that, that, that we're excited. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being with us, especially the fans that have tuned in. If y'all could just remain in your seats, we're going to do a couple of photos. I'm going to ask for us as a to step up to the podium with Mickey and Coach. Thank you. Yeah.
Thank you all very much. Thank you all again for being with us today.